lovely crunchy frosty morning perfect time for a nice walk this is not a barn fine episode of the late break show this is actually more of a archaeology or gardening episode because where i'm stood somewhere in the midlands is basically a derelict back garden full of old cars and tumble down garages and i'm going to have a look today in the cold welcome along to this special episode of the late break show i'm johnny smith Before I get too deep into this derelict garden, uh, I just want to say thanks to Dave at Retro Ford. If you've watched the Larder Sleeper episode, that was Dave. Dave was the one that found this place and he was supposed to be with me today. There's an awful lot of old Fords that I'm about to embark on. But unfortunately, his family are ill and he's got to look after them, family first. Thanks, Dave. I don't need Dave for this particular car though, because this is a car that's very close to my heart. This is none other than a Hillman Avenger. The car that I learned to drive in and pass my test in, um, I got taken home from hospital in as a little baby, albeit an estate version. And this is, I have to look, I think this is an early one. Look at that, that familiar dash. Yeah, see that gear stick, dashboard, badge there. It's so familiar. And those winders, they used to fall off. My dad had to make them himself before the days of 3D printing and all that stuff. What's bizarre is, the door's obviously been left open for years. The garage has collapsed on it. It's actually got a really nice condition interior. Bit of a tragedy. What's weird about these places is there's often garages, but the garages have got nothing of any value in. Just wood and paint tins. Yet all the cars have been left outside. But this Avenger was in some sort of lean-to. You can see the back of it. It's an early car. I went round to the front. It's NREG, so 73. Um, the sort of L-shaped hockey stick kind of rear lights and then it's tight up to what is uh, the remains of a Rover SD1. Don't know what engine yet. I love, I love the, the dash and the steering wheel in SD1s. I suppose you could call this urban exploring. We didn't used to call it that when we were kids. Snooping was what we used to call it. And this is a van. The thing about a lot of these vehicles is they've been there for decades and decades and decades. So they are all, I'm sure, according to Dave anyway, beyond, beyond restoration. And most of them are beyond donating parts. But that is a, is that a Bedford? Yeah. A Bedford CF, classic British van. There's the engine, look. Slanted over. Poor old thing, there's the, there's the build plaque. Yeah, Vauxhall Motors. These were all over the place as when I was a kid and, it, and earlier than that in the 70s, which is when they came about. Right, I think I've got eyes on. Oh, there's something in the hedge there. Is that another SD1? Yeah. Look, that's another SD1. Yeah. Almost didn't see it because of the undergrowth. I mean, it's a good thing that we're doing this in winter because all of this is normally just green. But that's a 2.6. Yeah, 2.6 SD1. Which will be long dead because the back window has been smashed and it will have been rotted to death. Poor thing. Do love an SD1. So that's where a garage was. No car there. But look at the state of this poor thing. Jag, XJ, oh my word. I think a tree has fallen on it because a lot of big trees here that have come down. Poor thing, sunroof car, the old uh, like Wabasto style rag top. That's probably it actually. And it's bent. The last time I saw a Jag XJ, this bent was on the Banger racetrack where they're still sadly really popular. My word. My word. It's sad, isn't it? There's something quite lovely in a way about nature claiming cars back. If you haven't watched my walk around that I did of a completely derelict scrapyard a while ago with my brother Greg, I'll put a link above my head for that. 
But yeah, there's the T-bar shifter, so it's obviously an auto, which most of them were. It'd be straight six, but how big? Can't quite see. Still got the still got the twin SUs on it though. Poor thing. Oh, there's a car in front of it. There's a car in front of it. And that is really rare in this country at least. That is an Opal Ascona four-door. So any Irish viewers of the Late Break Show will get, oh, oh, it's an Ascona. Look at it. If I poke my eyes out with these thorns. Yeah, that is the remains of an Opal Ascona. So uh, the brother of the Vauxhall Cavalier. Look at the way the ivy has gone round the Ross style tight wheels. And the, uh, see how much the, again, the interior is all still there. It's all complete, same as the Avenger, everything's in it, everything. So what these cars were doing, whether they were just bought cheap as the runarounds and then the person stopped using them and then just parked them and didn't park them out, still got a complete engine with an open throat Solex carb. And I'm starting to see now parts all over the floor. Bits of car that I'm gonna try and identify, but I can't guarantee that I will. But yeah, these are rare now. In two-door form, these are proper currency for rally. They've still got the front end, still got the lights, bumper. What's all this? Oh my gosh, this, is, this was a van. This is a Ford Transit. I thought it was a trailer. Look at the dash and that three spoke steering wheel and those door shapes, I recognise those, this is a transit. And it's basically been unpicked and unpeeled by nature. Struth. The Ascona is an R-Reg 1976 1.6. We're now going into a fairly ropey looking lean-to and there's another Jag XJ just ahead. I'm stepping. I'm stepping on all kinds of car bits that I'm trying to recognise. Here, look, this has had another tree fall on it, another XJ with another tree incident. And the tree has grown around it, this knotted tree here. Look, it's grown around the lovely chrome wheel. Poor thing. Can't see what engine it is. But uh, it's another, I think it's the sunroof car again. It's absolutely biblically rotten. And there's a, there is a garage that's still standing just there, which Dave says, I think there's an Escort in there, a complete one. So I'm gonna go and have a look with a torch in a sec. Right, it's a bit close, a bit tight for the cameraman to come in here. So I'm, gonna, I'm using a little action camera. I'm gonna see if I shimmy through and show you this Escort that's sort of entombed in a broken garage. Not gonna lie, it's slightly creepy. Um, with a collapsed roof. I'm doing this so you don't have to, right? There's a dashboard there. See that dash? Oh. And now, can you see through here? Look. So it, it was in a garage. It looks like the garage roof has collapsed. A load of like 80s new old stock still wrapped in plastic mattresses. And it's a red mark to a state escort. Wow. So I'm gonna try and shimmy around and get some more pics of it, obviously being a bit careful because the roof. So this is the escort estate uh, in the roof that's caved in. And if you go around here, you can see there's that Jag XJ the other side of that XJ and behind that's another car. So I'm gonna try and work out, but the roof is all collapsed there, so I've got to be careful. There we go, look. It's absolutely rotten, look. Absolutely wrong. Uh, 
have to shimmy back through. I want to go and see those other escorts. What's that dashboard from? What's that dash from? Okay, there's a bit of car that's been chopped into sections that's there. It's all just surface rust and I can't quite work out what it is. At first I thought it was an SD1, but I don't think it is. It's a fast backy something. And then it could be associated with that. And I think that's a car, but I don't quite know. I can see a petrol tank there and maybe a rear valance or, but it's, this tree has fallen on it and it's obviously rotten when it fell and it's folded the roof up just like a piece of tin foil. And I can't get in there. But what I do know is where that Jag XJ is there's another Jag XJ and then there's a couple of old Fords. And I'm trying not to get my lovely puffer jacket hitched on thorns because I've already had it repaired once. Too cold for the fleece today and it's not a barn find. Let's go this way. Look at this. I love going on these sort of archaeology walks. You always see stuff in the undergrowth. Bit of mini there, look. Still with the go faster stripe. And um, I am sure that's transit. Transit! I'm sure that's a Ford Transit rear cluster. Brilliant. And this is the bit which Bit of Mark 1 Cortina bonnet. Apparently that's Mark 1 Cortina. Love it. Right, bit more cardening this way. I've seen two Mark 1 Escorts. We've seen that estate there and that estate there. Let's go escort hunting a bit more. I've come round a slightly easier route rather than a collapsed roof garage because I think there's a, there's a London taxi there but I'm more interested in this is the back of that oh here we go yeah here's the back of that escort estate mark two extremely rotten as you can see and that is a is that a mark two as well I think this is a mark two yeah if you can get it's like a sort of pale yellow colour. Oh wow! Okay, we're in we're in the escort in naturist corner. Mark one escort, two door. Mark two, two door. Mark two, four door. And that I think is a completely unpeeled roof of a transit van. Mark two transit, transit. Amazing. So there's. Just these two here, quite something. A Mark two, two, two door, Mark one, two door escorts, completely ruined. I mean, look, the roof is rotten through and it didn't even have a sunroof, gosh. But again, still lots of stuff on it. It's just great to see, isn't it? It's great to see. We've snuck through this, the two door Mark one escort. The front of it's pretty much rotted off. The same as that Mark II over there. And look at the roof of the transit. It's just peeled open. You see the wiring along there for the courtesy lights and stuff. So that was, I think, a Mark I transit. Oh, it might have been a Mark II, actually. And that's a Mark I transit, uh, like pickup, as was. And that's the front of it. A lovely sort of cowl panel there, look, the front end. That was because the engine's been robbed out of that. But this green, this lovely kind of jade green thing is, is confusing me. I'm sure it's Japanese. A whole back has rotted off it. There's this beautiful light cluster on the parcel shelf, which I assume is from this car. And the steering wheel's not there. It's got these one, one piece seats and I'm looking for a maker's name on it somewhere. Got the gear knob, really nice clocks and stuff. Ah, okay. Yeah, I thought it was Japanese. It says Nissan Motor Company on the, the door jam here for the tire pressures. So I think it's a Nissan. What would it be though? Hey, it's not a Bluebird, is it? Well, it'd be a rear wheel drive Bluebird, I would have thought, but I mean, 
Have a look at the door handles. Have a look at some of the interior clocks. You tell me what you think. I mean, there's no front end on it at all. There's just a load of high voltage cabling. We'll, we'll get some shots of it and see if you can identify it for yourself, but it's rotten. But great color, great color. Whoa. I've still got the motor in, but again, there's no front end at all. It's just gone. Chrome bumper's still there. I, I don't know what model this is. Someone watching this will, no doubt. I can't quite tell because it's had all its badges nicked and it's steering wheel and it's so rotten that I think another bush has fallen on it or a tree's fallen, it's, it's rotten, it's broken its back and it's covered in cabling. I think it's a Peugeot 104. And I'm sure that these were made around the time of the Talbot Samba, because this is when Peugeot, Citroen and Talbot, they all kind of... But I remember a friend of mine, Luke, one of my oldest friends, we've known him since I was two, we were two, his mum and dad had one of these from new. And I remember the noise they made, they had a really vocal gearbox. <laughs> but this is dead. This is so dead. It's so, so, so dead. And, um, and then you've got the London taxis. There's two of them, actually. One's thick in a hedge and another one completely dead. I reckon they're 70s as well. Most of the cars in here, I'm going to say most of the cars that, that, uh, that are sitting here have been here for 30 years. More. More. The fact that there's anything left of them is, is amazing, really. When cars are this rotten, look, the metal just becomes like kitchen roll. So rotten. But this, this removal Mark 1 Transit behind me actually looks quite solid because it's aluminium. I'm trying not to hitch my jacket, my treasured jacket, my, my rab puffer. Look at the bonnet on this Escort. It's just like wet toilet paper. There's weight in it just from all the hedge. <laughs> Don't... Don't spike your jacket, don't spike your jacket. Again, it's slurp bone, the, it's still got the battery attached to this one. I mean, yeah, it's rotten to hell, but this got the VIN plate on the front, engines in, rads out. It's just amazing to see. And there's another car back there, but I don't think I can get to it. I'll try and go another way. I don't know what it is. It might be another Jag. Yeah, there we go. Just weird to see two door escorts, not being sold for thousands of pounds, not modified, not on eBay, with their VINs being traded illegally. Found another couple of cars, another Ford. Look, another estate, this time Mark III or maybe Mark IV Escort estate. Remember when they made two-door estates? Well into the 80s, weird, isn't it? You buy a family estate car, but it's still got two doors. And then this here, a car which not really anybody likes. Even I struggle with these, Austin Ambassador. That is a true rare, but nobody cares. And I'm gonna try and sneak round here because there's a couple more commercial vehicles probably another transit in that hedge yeah there is oh there's a, there's a Land Rover can you see can you see just there I'll just clear this hedge look it's a bloody Land Rover the uh this Land Rover has got some amazing sign writing on it it says defender or or hand done weirdly it's in better condition than most of the cars here which is rare for a Land Rover. It's definitely complete, apart from that door. Everything else is here. And it looks fairly solid. Um, I don't know a great deal about Land Rovers. I'm thinking this is a very, I would say it's a very early kind of county pre-Defender name, but I might be wrong. Uh, and there's some, it's covered in VHS videotapes. They're all over the seats and all over here. And if I was a betting man, I'd say one of these contains adult material. Actually, I don't know how old it is. I'm starting to... 
It's got modern seats in it. Maybe I'm being swayed by that, but it's a split windscreen and the dash looks ancient, so I, I don't know. What's that? Is it some of the service history? I can't see because of the... Ah, oh, here we go. It's not at all. It's the uh, workshop manual for the Vauxhall Victor 101 and VX 490, including the deluxe and estate versions. So, and there isn't one of those around here, not that I've found. But what there is, just here, is another transit. Another two transits. Another three transits. Two, two tipper trucks, by the look of it, or flatbeds. And this one here, with a front that looks like it's melted off. Can you see, this was a wrecker truck. It's got a crane on the back. It was a recovery vehicle. And nothing's going to recover it now. Nothing. Poor thing. That's one of the door cards, one of the f fake wood door cards. I've never seen so many old transits together. Not, certainly not in this day and age. Yeah. That will live no more. I just walked past this, which I thought was just a pile of scrap. And I can't get to it because it's thick in, in thorns. But just through there, I think it's probably the most modern car here, which is a mid 80s Ford Orion in like a pigeon blue, dusty blue. You can just see it, we'll try and get it on camera. But it's right there. Right through all that stuff there, you might get it if you walk across this, all this bits of dead caravan and garage doors. Yeah, Ford Onion. I did see a Ford Onion hubcap back there. I bet that's one of its hubcaps. Well, it's definitely a Ford Cortina. I can tell by that front wing, I think it's a Mark IV. But it's so biblically rotten. I mean, look, the roof is folded in from there. There's no A-pillar, gone. Front, front bumper's still on it, wheels are still on it, engine and box are in it. And look at this roof and the window. The poor thing is rotted to death under these trees in the damp. And then, actually, I didn't recognise it at first. There's an Escort van, Mark II Escort van just there. And there's another one in the tree, but it's so rotten beyond recognition, I, I walked straight past it. Couldn't even tell it was a vehicle, hardly. But it is. There's, there's two escort vans. This place is brilliant. It's sad, but it's also brilliant. At some point, this would have been someone's new car. They ordered, went into the showroom, bought it, went, yep, that's the one for me. And it will have done however many miles as a family car or a rep car or... Yeah, it's just weird, isn't it, the way these things get left. Probably should have been scrapped 30, 40 years ago. It's got a Pinto in it. That much I can tell you. I'm absolutely loving the, the decals on this fastback Chevette, Vauxhall Chevette. It's brilliant. There is a Chevette, an exceptionally special one, coming up in a future episode of The Late Break Show that definitely doesn't look like this. It's probably the most expensive Chevette in the world. This is, like all these things, is, is dead. It's dead and irreparable. But I hope you've enjoyed this sort of gardening walk episode of the late break show if you know of a car or cars that are either beyond help but interesting or survivor cars that have been sat in a garage or a shed or a barn for a really long time why don't you let me know i'll put a link in the description for my email address for the late break show and we'll come and film it thanks for watching like and subscribe if you haven't already and maybe you want to become a patreon for a couple of quid a month and you'll get early access to videos like this thank you <laughs>